thank you for uh, coming to this intimate, lovely little group. I love it when we have a small group. Uh, my name's Jenny, and I'm, I'm from a company called Human Made. Um, we are a company that does WordPress at scale. Um, so I was here yesterday, and a lot of people were asking, why are you here? Like, you do WordPress, you are a Drupal con. Which is, to be fair, a very, very good question. And the answer to that question that I figured out yesterday is because the organizers picked this talk. So that is the reason why. Um, but more importantly, it's a talk that I'm very passionate about for a variety of reasons, which I will share with you today. Um, I was a electronic engineer student, and then I was an art student, and then I was doing this and that, and um, I finally found a degree that I actually liked um, called Multimedia and Internet Technology. And as part of that course, I had to take an internship, which I did. Um, I took that internship at a place um, which was a PHP house. And one of the things that they do there is they are the um, co-founders of PHP Northwest. It's a PHP conference in the Northwest of the UK in Manchester. And um, they, one of the jobs I had was to maintain the site, which is on WordPress. Um, in my year at that company, I was doing SEM framework, reskins, um, WordPress stuff, Drupal stuff. It was Drupal 6, um, so it was painful. Um, but it was, it was all good fun, because as a student, you learn lots of new things, and you try different things, and you're trying things at the same time. Um, and it was all very exciting to me. For one, I didn't realize there was an industry that paid you to make websites, which is something I've been doing since I was 13. So I had easily taken eight years to realize I could get paid for something I was doing like off my own back, which was kind of not fair. Um, but it was all good and dandy. Um, and it was really cool going to this. I, like As part of my intern, I got to go to this conference. And it was really cool because I got to meet all the speakers and the attendees. And I kept on going around going, I'm a student. Like, what advice can you give me? What advice would you give your student self? And people were telling me things and all this stuff. And it was really inspiring, super, super inspiring. And so inspiring that when I left the company, I went back. Um, and I finished off my degree. It was all good. Passed. Yes. Um, and <laughs> the funny thing was like, I got um, assigned to build the next version of the PHP Northwest website, which is 2011. And it was the first time that I ever built a website for developers. And there's nothing like building a website, especially like a conference website, which is all PHP developers, where they will like scrutinize every pixel that's in the wrong place and how like the CSS animations didn't work properly. Or like I just missed a bug in like a particular browser because I totally forgot to test it on Safari because I was on a Linux machine. Um, and it was, it was a great learning experience. Again, um, having all these people tell you that your project was amazing, but also that you'd gotten all these little things wrong was really cool. Um, it meant that I was like being like co-community mentored by all these people. In 2012, when I graduated, um, I was actually looking for a job, as, as you do when you graduate. And um, I actually applied for a company that was doing Drupal and a company that was doing WordPress. Um, and I had to pick between the two, because um, I got the, both the job offers. I ended up going with WordPress. And in 2012, I also ended up going to my first WordCamp. So it's the first like CMS-centric um, sub-community event in Edinburgh. And again, it was a community that was lovely and really welcoming to this just graduate person who had like gone into a project that was far too big over her head and was a sole developer on it. But it was fine. I got to go there and meet someone who I'd met on the internet who was helping me fix the things that were an issue at work on a forum. And to be able to stand in front of that person and say thank you was amazing. Like just to realize that the person who's been typing on the internet was actually a real human. It was kind of nice. <laughs> Um, and this kind of proceeded in 2013 until 2014 when my partner got a job down south. So we commuted all the way from Manchester down to Reading, which is a really cool place. It's right by London. But Reading, even though nicknamed sometimes the Silicon Valley of the UK, 
doesn't have many user groups. It doesn't have a PHP, it didn't have a PHP user group, it didn't have a WordPress user group, it doesn't have a Drupal user group, even though Acquia are based there, um, hint. Um, <laughs> they, 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 they had one which is Reading Geeks Night, and another one which is um, Breaking Borders, which was more for like front end design y things, so it wasn't really aimed at me. And then there was like sysop stuff. There was like this whole bit in the middle that was just missing. Um, and the one thing I learned over this time is that I'm a community addict. I love meeting new people in the community. I love learning from people. I love just hanging out with people and hearing the stories of how they got to where they are and the journeys and the, the tries and tribulations that they've had in the, on their way because every one of us have a, has a different journey. Um, and it's something that I've become really passionate about because I really appreciate the fact that the PHP Northwest community was there for me when I started, that they were welcoming. In 2014, it was my last year of running PHP Northwest as an organizer because we've down south. It's kind of annoying to travel back and forth for a conference and organizing and stuff. Um, so it was my last year. It was really, really sad. Um, and... It was the first time at a PHP conference where I had found that um, people were laughing at the word WordPress, and it wasn't nice. Before that, I had noticed that a lot of WordPress people that I had met didn't really go to PHP conferences, and because it was my last PHP conference as an organizer, I gave them my word that this was the nicest PHP community that I'll ever meet, and I would guarantee them that they would have a good time. And then for those people to turn up to my conference and then listen to a keynote who mentions the word WordPress in a completely acceptable manner, and then the whole entire room laughing, laughing with the joke or laughing at the joke, doesn't matter. They were laughing. I actually tweeted this out straight away. I was heartbroken. I was not even heartbroken, really. I was fuming. And... People who were at that conference know how fuming I was because at the end of the conference, uh, the, the other organizers got me on stage, gave me a microphone, which was such a bad idea, and, and said, oh, okay, can you make a few words? And I was like, are you sure you want me to run after today's like, stuff? And they're like, yeah. So off I went. Um, and this is actually where this talk comes from because I realized at that moment there is a real problem with the way that in our silo communities, we're behaving amongst each other. Um, and it's really unfair because like, I'm trying my hardest to bring other people in and then you're just making me really upset and it just makes me really sad. I'm more like that person on there. <laughs> um, so as part of uh, some research I was doing, I'm not very scientific, um, I just tweeted out this tweet. Doing a very non-scientific research, how do you as a non-WordPress community perceive the WordPress community? Um, and I got some good responses from the glimpse I get through the feed, a very large, vibrant, active, passionate group of people, or very positive words, fantastic. Then you get stuff like this, or oh, not good enough to be a real developer, hmm, it's a pretty sad response, just as someone pointed out. And it's even a more sad response when I go to the biggest WordCamp in the like WordPress calendar at the time in 2014, which is WordCamp San Francisco, I speak to one of the core developers of WordPress and ask them to submit a paper, um, a call for paper to a PHP conference in the UK. And the response was, I'm too scared to go. They will mock me for being a WordPress developer. This is a core developer who stands on stage at WordPress events and talks about Docker and PHP 7 and HHVM and says this is like a really cool way to build your servers and, you know, tells all the latest stuff. Yet they are not willing to do the same talk at a PHP conference because they're scared of being mocked. There is a problem there. More sad faces. The mocking of WordPress by any other community is like watching my parents have a fight every day. And my parents used to fight a lot, so, <laughs> and it's not a nice place to be. As a child, you don't want your parents fighting. As a child of the open source community, because that's what I really feel like I am. You know, I 
I grew as a developer being in the open source community. The open source community has given me my ability to be a developer every time I've had a problem. Even when I was at university doing my dissertation, I was doing my project and I, I didn't know how to do something. So I asked the community on IRC and someone sent me a library and I was like, great, I'll just attribute it to you. Thanks. Um, having all these people who I consider my parents fighting is really, really bad. Now, I was here yesterday at the community summit and I met a bunch of people who said, actually, like, Drupal get this a lot too, which also makes me really upset because the reality of it is the mocking of any technology by anyone is like watching my parents have a fight every day. I don't really see why we have to mock each other or fight about which one's better. The fight is not with open source projects. It should be against proprietary software. Why are we fighting amongst ourselves? I don't care if you're doing Drupal, Typo3, Joomla, Magento, WordPress. You're doing open source and that's amazing. You're sharing the information you know. But when we are mocking ourselves amongst each other, proprietary software is just getting off easy. Software does what we tell it to do or what we teach it to do with today's AI. The thing that are fighting are people. Now, it was really cool today because I was in the pre-note. Um, if you missed the pre-note, totally watch it because it was really funny. Um, and they use an old Irish proverb. I can't pronounce that, but it says, two people shorten the road. That's what it means. Um, and the idea is that if you work together, you can get further. And it's really, really true. People make the community. You are the community. So the onus is on you on me, on all of us, to make a community that we're proud of, an open source community. The Drupal community has great initiatives that have already been in place for a while. The getting off the island thing was amazing. The GoPHP5 thing back in the day was also really cool. That started in the Drupal community. The fact that you've taken on Symfony framework components and you're having these discussions in the open is really, really inspiring to other communities. But there is more to be done. There is no silver bullet. I will just give you that for free. But I do believe that multidimensional problems, which this is, needs a multidimensional solution. So I've come up with some suggestions. Um, and I would love to hear if anyone else has other suggestions or other things that they're doing to try and bridge these communities. And when I talk about bridging communities, I'm not saying that you have to go and live in these other communities. I'm just saying, like, go and visit them every so often. So first and foremost, events. I mentioned PHP Northwest, but PHP Northwest, the conference, also has a user group, also named PHP Northwest. Um, and it's really cool because I met the, uh, this one, this one, and this one, and they were Drupalers. I met these three people at PHP Northwest, Philip, Mike, and Eli. And, was, and then this guy here was the guy who interviewed me for the, job at the Drupal company that I nearly took. And the sole reason I nearly took that job was because I really liked him as an interviewer. Sole reason I nearly took that job. So my life could be very, very different in a different open source community. And it's really cool that I met these people, these Drupalers at a PHP event because that was my gateway into the Drupal community. When I was doing those Drupal 6 projects, they were the people I asked. I was like, hey, Philip, you're a Drupaler. How do you do this? It's great to have those connections user groups, or if you're in the WordPress community, we call them meetups because, yeah, we're special. Um, they're great places to meet each other on a monthly basis in your local area. And there's loads of them in both communities all over the world. There's also Drupal camps in your local area, but there's also word camps as well. Nearly most open source projects have something similar in, the, in many regions of the world. So definitely check it out. There's also conferences like this, but I think from what I've learned yesterday was community summits, inviting other people, other members from other projects into your community summits is a great way to share, oh, how do you do this? What's your solution to that? Because that was what yesterday was filled with. It was, for me, really interesting to see how Drupal ecosystem is set up, but also equally interesting to see what questions people had about WordPress and be able to share my experiences in the WordPress community. Now, I know that 
going to a work camp is probably not going to be interesting to go to the talks, but you might want to like meet the people and see the community firsthand. So why don't you volunteer? I would love to do more volunteering in other projects, and it's one thing that I've decided that I'm going to do more of. Because yesterday when I came here, I started taking pictures and I wanted to know how organizers were doing stuff and running their communities. Well, if you're a volunteer, you get to see that firsthand. You're part of that team. So if you want to be interested in bridging those communities in a people manner, then volunteer at other events that are open source. If you are a community leader, you should also be looking at Community Leadership Summit. The next one is happening in London in about a month's time. There's other things that you can do as well. Documentation, I noticed, um, is kind of hard to come by. Um, a lot of people mentioned yesterday that there was not many doc much documentation for Drupal camps and Drupal meetups. But WordPress has actually done a lot of work on our work camp documentation. This thing is crazy long and pretty much a book on how to run a work camp. And all you need to do is replace the word WordCamp and WordPress with the word Drupal Camp and Drupal. And you're probably going to get lots and lots of great resources there. So if you're looking for resources, ask other communities what resources they have and learn from them. Now, with dates of our events, it'd be really cool if we could consider our, well, what, when we set our dates. Um, there's a project which is open source, and it's run by one person, really. Um, called Open Tech Calendar. And it's a really great concept, but it isn't getting much traction for various reasons. Um, but even without this open source project, you should know your local community members and ask them, have you got an event coming up that you're planning? Could we share dates so that we don't clash? Or let's put them on the weekend after each other so people can fly in for both. No things like that make a great idea. Joint events as well. Running a joint event with a local user group is really cool. Drupal Austria did this last year where the security team members from WordPress Type 3 and Drupal had been talking to each other about the work. And it was really interesting to have all those people with all their expertise come together in one location. And it was a huge success. PHP.UG is a great place to find your local PHP user groups. And you are a PHP CMS, the same way WordPress is. So go and have a look at what your newest PHP user group is. There's also something that we did once really coolly in Manchester, which is um, Open Sprint Days, um, I was talking to Mike, and he mentioned how the Drupal Open Sprints always have the same people, and I was complaining how the WordPress Contributor Days, which is our word for sprints, um, um, basically it was full of newbies, and we'd really like to have more people like who are like more mature and like been in the project a bit longer, and we we're debating how these run. So we got together and just went, let's just open an open source sprint project, and um, Sprint Day. So we invited anyone who had an open source project to come along. We, one of us got the food, the other one got the venue. That's all you really need for a sprint. Tables, chairs, internet, you're good to go. Um, and even the Joomla community got involved. And it was really, really cool because when you're on your own and doing a sprint with just your team, there's only a certain amount of you there, which means that the buzz in the room isn't very high. There isn't that like clacking and like the, the, the talking and the, the all like the the energy that comes from a large group of people. But when you had all these different open source projects come together, there was that energy. We were working on completely different tables, completely different projects, yet their energy was feeding into our energy, and it was such an inspiration. We're, I mean, talking to Robert, who's part of the Drupal London group, and we're talking about doing these quarterly again, but it would be really cool if other, pro if other places across the world would do it too, because I think it's something that would really, really help to bridge the community gap a little bit more. Also, open camps. Um, I went to the first open camp in the UN um, back in July, and it was basically just full of all these open source projects. It's kind of like FOSDEM in Europe. If you've not been to FOSDEM, that's another one that you should really go to. It's really good fun. Um, but these, these um, events, which have multiple different open source projects coming together, it's something that we all should be like working towards. For one, it saves venue hire costs. So I'm all game for that, because that's a lot of pain. And when you're in doubt about doing a joint event, then during the summer, have a barbecue. Barbecues are a great way to bring people together in a really relaxed manner. Everyone's not having to say, this is better or that is better. And everyone's there to enjoy. And most people, I do believe, need to eat. 
some food in some manner. So a barbecue is a great way to host a group of different people and get them to mingle together. Maybe do that Drupal bingo that you have downstairs. That was a great way. Find someone to do different things. That'd be a really fun way to have a barbecue. If you are courageous, and I hope you are, then do a field trip. Go to their user groups and ask people how they solve their problems. Both Drupal and WordPress has accessibility issues. We both have translation issues. I bet you we both have security issues and I bet you we both have community issues. It's really interesting to hear how other people are doing it so we can say, oh, would that work for us? Would that not work for us? And discuss those things so we can learn from each other. It's also really cool when you invite outside community people to speak at your events, like me, hello. Um, but I would love to see more of this, um, both on a local level and on a larger scale. It brings in new perspectives, and one thing for sure in the WordPress community, whenever I go somewhere else to speak, they always say, oh yeah, I should be more like that. I should go to my local Drupal community, because they realize that if I've managed to come here and then not be killed by leaving, then it must have, must have had a good time. And I definitely will be telling them I did. Because I, I do believe that sharing your knowledge and sharing your solutions means that everyone can submit to their local community events. I mean, no one can tell you that your information is wrong. When you do go to these other events, bring back the knowledge you gain. It's one thing to just go to these events, but it's another thing to talk about these events that you're going to. So one thing that I do do when I go to an, another project's event is then go back and talk about DrupalCon and the Community Summit. I spent two hours yesterday with the community team saying what the Drupal Community Summit was like and how it all worked, because it works differently to the way the WordPress one works. And they were like, oh, that's really interesting. Two hours. It was like 1 a.m. in the morning with the Americans. It was crazy. And another thing, try building a side project on another platform. It's one thing to be looking and listening and hearing about this stuff. It's another thing to try it out. I installed Drupal 8. I love it compared to Drupal 6. That was the last experience I had. And so my perception of Drupal 6, uh, Drupal in general was all about Drupal 6. But when I tried 8, I was like, got it. This is way better. I'm grateful that someone was persistent on me trying Drupal 8 because otherwise my perception of Drupal would have been wrong. It's really important to compare and contrast what's going on today as well as previously and making sure that our perceptions are up to date with the latest versions. Now, I'm not saying that you need every single minor point but every so often, maybe once or twice a year, checking it out is not a bad idea. Again, people are the community. So when we're talking about people, we need to talk about inclusivity. Inviting everyone to the party and introducing everyone to everybody. It's really hard sometimes. You, you can't see someone and you think, yeah, I know them, but I'm not sure, and it's kind of scary. It's really nice if you notice someone like that to make the first step for them and just introduce people. Be like, hi, what's your name? I'm just, you look like you want to be introduced to someone. I'll do the middle manning. And that's a really nice way to bring the community together and make sure that we actually have a community that is talking to each other. It's also good to have recognition for things that are not code. Um, on the WordPress um, project, we have these little badges. We have different teams. And if you've been a speaker, you get a speaker's badge. And then, because I'm on the community team, I get a community badge as well. But depending on what part of the team and what things you have done, you get lots and lots of different badges. Recognize that things are not just about code. Words are one of the most powerful tools we have. Let's think about the words we choose when we, use, when we communicate to each other. We're able to choose our words, but we're not able to choose the way it affects other people. And that's something that we have to be very careful of especially when you are trying to welcome new people because you never know who it is that you're talking to. I'm a WordPress engineer. When I tell this to people, some people are saying, oh, WordPress, so, so insecure, so blah, blah, blah. And which, don't get me wrong, I understand, but it is not really the right word that I would like use. It's not cool to be like, belittling other things. When people say that to me, I'm always, I always question, why? Why do they have this perception of WordPress? And then they tell me that last time they tried WordPress was that like WordPress two point something, and it's like, you do realize WordPress project is 13 years old. It's quite old. <laughs> 2.0 is, um, you know, a decade ago. 
saying, why did you say that? And it would be really cool to keep an open mind. Or even better, don't reply to someone with, uh, oh, you're a weird person. Instead, say, welcome. It was really cool yesterday. Majority of the people got it right. When I said WordPress, everyone was like, oh, that's really cool. I'm glad you could make it. We could learn lots from you. And I was like, oh, OK, cool. They're not going to like take on my head. I'm glad. I'm here. I'm, I feel safe. And that's really, really important. And that's the kind of experience that when I get, I'm going to tell other people about. Diversity is a major thing that a lot of people in tech talk about. I'm going to say that diversity has to be part of the plan, not an afterthought. But I'm also going to talk about diversity of technology, the tool choices, the opens, the operating systems. We need to respect people's choices on what they do. Because they're not on a Mac doesn't make them better or worse. It just makes their choices, for whatever reason, their choices. Respecting people's choices doesn't mean that you'd have to agree to, with it. It just means being respectful of those choices. I did a talk at AlterConf um, a month ago in Dublin, just down the road, called Building an Accessible Community. And there I talk about all the different things that we did at WordCamp London. I would love for you to check out the slides. They're at this URL, which I will link to. Um, and it shares lots and lots of stories of how to build an accessible community. The gist of the accessible community is that if you want to look at diversity and, in, and therefore include as many people as possible, if you make it accessible to as many people as possible, then you get a more diverse pool. That was the logic behind the idea. And WordCamp London was the playground for that idea. And the results are on that slide. And the ultimate underlying point of it all is make accessibility a first class citizen of your events of your project, and people will come. Now, swag. One thing that I want to talk about swag with. Do it right or don't do it at all. It's as simple as that. Swag done wrong is not worth the energy, the cost of swag done wrong. Swag done right, people talk about for a lifetime. So instead of pushing all your company's money into swag that's done wrong, just do it right. Or save up and do something special next time when you have a more of a bigger budget. Knowledge sharing. I mentioned before respecting people's choices. And the reason why I say that is because people want to learn. They really want to learn. I wanted to learn. Everyone in this event wants to learn. You know more than someone and less than someone else in this room, let alone this event. When speakers are on stage, they're just telling you their experiences that they've figured out beforehand. There is nothing stopping anyone in this room standing on this stage and sharing their experiences of what they've had. That's all I'm doing. There's also some really cool things that the Drupal group I've learned do, including mentoring team, which they have a mentor orientation right after this talk. So if you're thinking about mentoring someone, which I highly recommend, go to the mentor uh, orientation. It's one way to pass on your knowledge. Make sure that someone doesn't jump through that pothole that you had to jump through. There's also PHP mentoring as well. And if you want to learn something, speak up. Tell your local organizers that you want to learn this subject. Because a lot of the time, local organizers don't know what people want to learn about, and therefore just pick things as pick things come through. Ask questions. Ask lots of questions. No question is too stupid. And it's so important, this slide. I wrote it again. No question is too stupid. At PHP Northwest, at the first event I ever went to, I asked a question. They do a talk on arrays. And I asked the question, why is array pull and array pop and not array pull and array push? And I was a student at the time, just in my second year. And the whole room went quiet. The whole room. I was like, if I just broke the internet, all these professionals have just gone quiet on me. This is something oddly wrong with this. <laughs> and they realized that I was looking at arrays horizontally and I should be looking at it vertically. But it proves the point. No question is too stupid. Being a newbie, like today's pre note pointed out, they have this open mindedness attitude towards a project. And it's something that we shouldn't be embracing and celebrating. 
So with the attitude, I've mentioned it a few times, welcome, don't be nittle, and let's leave the door open. We can educate new people and old people. We can support them when they come in and out of the industry because people come back and forth all the time. And we can be mentors. No matter how long have you been here, if you've been in the Drupal community, if you've been in the open source community for more than a day, you know more than somebody already. We can be cheerleaders for people who are trying and for people who are doing the work. We can also be cheerleaders for people who are thinking about joining our communities because when we're being cheerleaders and they see that we're happy people and are welcoming people, they want to join us. But also be respectful of other people's opinions. Be empathetic to the fact that you might just not agree with someone and guide them to where discussions are happening and also to a good event. And if you're doing this already, then amazing. Please share your experiences. WordCamp London is going to be happening in March. I would love for people in all communities to come and share their experiences there. So just to wrap up, bridges are not built overnight. <laughs> there is no quick fix of this. But brick by brick, we can create a two-way dialogue in our sibling communities, in our open source community, and share the knowledge and experience we have with Docker, with MySQL, with all these other things that we have in common. But bridges also need maintenance. It's up to us to keep the, our doors open and the bridges usable. If we don't maintain those bridges, those bridges will break apart. And that's important that both sides of that bridge are maintained. We can improve our open source community one step at a time because multidimensional problems need multidimensional solutions. So I ask you, what solutions do you have? The Drupal community has a saying, come for the community, stay, uh, come for the code, stay for the community. But I'd like to change this a little bit. Come for the code and stay for the open source community instead. Go rape my agut, which I think is thank you in Irish. <laughs> I'd like to take any questions. But other than that, thanks for staying and thanks for listening. Um, the, sorry, the microphone is over there and the AV people said you have to go and speak in that microphone so they can take, um, they can record the questions. Hey Jenny, uh, Damien McKenna for the recording. Can you please switch back to the slide um, with the info on the mentoring sessions? Because they're not on the schedule. Wickwire so meeting for Today's one is at one o'clock, Wickwire meeting at four. <coughs> Excellent. Yes, this should be your next point of location. <sighs> so for the They're on the boss session. Um, I did have two quick questions. Um, yeah. So, do you have examples of swag done wrong? Without having to give names or anything, but things that you found that you saw. So, the easiest example is uh, t-shirts. Um, there's nothing, no reason why, as organizers, we can't take... Um, so, at Workout London, we do a thing where we have a chat box which says, I understand that t-shirts are not guaranteed, but we're taking t-shirt sizes anyway, just in case we do do them. And then underneath, we then have all the sizes possible. And then um, I have seen other events where they actually put the actual sizing chart because a medium in the US and a medium in the UK are completely two different things. Um, so that's really cool. And there's nothing wrong with the organizers then collaborating all that data together and then giving it to sponsors to say, this is what we expect if you're doing one at a time. So they, they know percentage wise of how many female t-shirts, how many male t-shirts of which sizes, in which particular sizing chart to expect so they can get better swag. Because otherwise it's wasted textiles and we've got plenty of that already. Cool. The other question was, um, have you had any experience with um, either a resistance to having events during the week or preference for the weekend ones? Um, I've been to both. Um, PyCon runs kind of like this where it's a long-term one. Uh, I wouldn't say it's usually the issue of time of day, um, although if you are an event that's trying to bring more people from a different community, 
it's always a good idea to look at what kind of events they have and when. So the community would, like in the WordPress community, we're used to things happening during the weekend. Something during the week you sh is kind of hard because you're working, so you have to justify it to work. So it depends on the kind of people you are going for. Um, but in general, like you're not the only people who do things during the week. One of the biggest issues when I was talking to like one of my colleagues about coming here, because we have a WordCamp EU, which is kind of similar to this, and I said, oh, you should come to DrupalCon because it's their version of WordCamp EU, and we could learn a thing or two. And they were like, 500 pounds is a lot of money. Um, and so that actually was the bigger factor, because obviously we would have to fly in and stuff like that. And so it's all about cost factor. I don't know if we could do a kind of like buddy system where we give like two free tickets to like different open source projects or something to like kind of at least get them to entice to come along or something. Um, but I'm thinking from the top of my head here. So I'm all ears for any solution that we can come up with. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Um, Hello. So my question is about um, kind of uh, organizers. You mentioned there's a couple of events that seem to be specifically around um, organizers and them sharing their own kind of experience and resources. Um, where Where's the best place to find out about that information? Um, Good question. Um, because I'm a community addict, my Twitter feed is basically all organizers telling me when things are going to happen. Um, <laughs> There's various, lots and lots of various different spreadsheets that people have tried, and there's loads and loads of different like lists. Um, so I tend to just keep my ear on the ground. I guess I should be sharing this in some form or manner. Um, yeah, let's let's come up with a solution for that. Um, yeah, but there is one that if you're an, if you're a user group organizer or a conference organizer, one that you should check out is ConfConf. It's based in the UK. Was in Bristol last year. I don't know if they're doing another one, but they. That whole thing was talking about, it was literally an event for organizers. It was so meta, it was funny. Um, and it's where everyone shares their pain points of how to sponsor and all this stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to get around a table and like come up with a solution that like everyone would be happy with. Cool, thank you. No problem. Hello. Hi, Johnny. Oh, I'm short compared to Mike. Oh, yeah, so am I, snap. <laughs> um, I'm Mike Anello. Um, so there's been talk over the years in the Drupal community, and this is kind of a WordPress question for you, but or community, yeah, yeah, community for question for you, about how we can better surface non-code contributions. Mm -hmm. And I saw you had a slide up there of, I guess, the WordPress uh, uh, profile page with a couple of badges. Yeah, I'm not even sure which way I'm going. No, go wrong way. Um, we'll get there. Well, while you're frantically. Yeah, carry on. Around. So my question is, are those badges, are they, uh, awarded is not the right word, are they given to the user or are the user selected? Given to the user. Okay. And, uh, um, and, and I guess, if you, let me, hang on a second. Given to, is that the correct way of putting it? So I guess your question is, how do, how do users get these badges? Sure, okay. That's um, probably an easier so way of saying it. So if you have spoken at any WordCamp, um, your um, in the WordCamp website, you you get you get your username gets added to it, and then that gets linked to your profile, and so it knows that you've been a speaker. So you only need to speak once, and you'll get the speaker's badge. If you're on the community team, um, the community one either you've been an organizer of a WordCamp, and therefore you're on the organizers list on the WordCamp, which you as a team you'd input that information in, or you're you're someone like me who works on the community team as a core contribution to the um, thing. So you get added to the list as well. Um, so the core one which you get, which is actually just um, two arrow signs, um, that's the core team one. And if you do any patches or even like do a patch and then it gets removed or whatever, like there's some way that they use SVN to basically pull those out and then make sure that all the usernames have those in there. Different teams have different rules. Most of them, are uh, you've done something once, therefore you get this. Some of them are not autom automatic any automatic yet, um, but the meta team, which is our kind of mothership that looks after us all, is working through making all that automated. Um, the problem with that is some teams want it to be like, you do three contributions to translations and then you get the badge. So each team makes up the rules and then the meta team builds it. Um, so yeah, um, it's pretty cool. Um, small gamification of it, 
Some people don't like gamifying it, some people do, but it's nice to be recognized for things that are not code related ones because code is easy. Code, you can just get the URLs. But even in the code one, they're trying to work out how to, how to have recognition for people who contribute by raising book tickets, and not only book tickets, but then also testers. So how do you recognize testers and QA people and stuff like that? So it becomes this really big problem that we haven't got the full answer to, but I know that the Drupal community are in discussions of this a similar problem. But um, pro tip, uh, WordCamp Europe is hosting the, we have our community, sum community summits um, biannually or annually kind of, but the next one is going to be in Paris, June next year. I do believe it's June. Um, but yeah, one of my plans is to invite some of the Drupal community because I think we're having a lot of the same conversations and even if we go with different solutions, having the same, having those like, you know, bouncing off conversations like I was doing with Damien and Mike just then, it's a great way just to spearhead those conversations and see what people are thinking about. Um, so yeah, I would love to see some of the Drupal community there and if I have any power over it, it will happen. All right, well, no one's behind me, so I'm gonna keep asking questions. Yeah, go for it. More. So just because I'm lazy, um, are those badges clickable? Like if, if you were to click on like a speaker badge, would you see all of the... Ooh, th I don't think so. But that okay. would be such a cool thing. All right. Can someone like remind me to, to put that as in as a <laughs> ticket? That would, be, that would make total sense. So if you all click right. on it, then it'll go on to the, make, the, the team of what it is and like how to get involved. Oh, that is so cool. Yes, well, we should do that. that okay. <laughs> um, My list of things to do is getting longer. <laughs> I can see this happening now. Go on. All right, so then... You know, you said whenever someone speaks at a, a, at a WordCamp, mm -hmm. um, they automatically get the badge. So I think that's, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just kind of confirming this. That's a result of the fact that the, the WordCamps are kind of, their, their websites at least are kind of centrally run. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so in the Drupal community, we don't have that. So I that's do a bit more that. of an issue for us where, yeah. You know, campsites are independently built and run, so we don't have that central clearinghouse for that type of data. Yeah, uh, it's 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 a hard problem to solve based on your um, what my understanding of the current Drupal situation is. But open source projects are amazing because any person can make a change, and so if this is a problem in your community now then the question you should be asking yourself is, are you going to allow this be a problem in your community in the future? Or as a community, or are you going to fix this in some manner or way? Maybe there's some OAuth way of like using the Drupal.org thing, so it's all in the Drupal.org profiles. That would be really nice. Um, obviously, I don't know how the system's completely set up. I'm completely taking from the top of my head, but this is what I love about open source communities. It's like, we can have a conversation and come up with crazy ideas and then basically go, which one's going to stick? Um, there is nothing to stop you or anyone in this room or anyone here in the Drupal community or the open source community make that patch and start making that change or even at least start having that discussion. All right, do we still have more time? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll ask one more question then I'll sit down, so. Is it about the badges stuff? I've got a point of information actually about that. Um, no, it's sort of, but go ahead. Okay. I'll wait, I'll wait. Uh, well, it's, it's just to say that um, there was a discussion of, of the badges back in uh, DrupalCon Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, and that, the video for that is probably still up. And um, it was a proposal by Rachel Lawson uh, to use the open badges standard, which is a kind of a Mozilla standard for mm -hmm. maximally distributed badges. So you don't have to rely on Drupal.org serving it. You don't have to rely on a particular provider. Yeah. Um, just that that talk's still up, and Rachel is going to be in the uh, mentor orientation next. So the slide that was up just now about that. So if anyone wanted to talk to her after this, they can definitely find her in the next session. Yeah, I mean, like, one of the things I really like about um, WordPress, um, we call them ticket champions, is that we have a group of people who will champion one ticket on the track ticket and basically say, what is the status of this? How can we move this? And that's literally their only job, and to keep an eye on that one ticket that is bugging them for life. So if this is something that you're passionate about, if you can't do the code, if you can't have, if you don't have the facilities to like physically make it happen, one thing you can do is just go, so where is this up to? Because things get forgotten. Things pe people forget to talk about it, and things get forgotten. So something like that is really cool. 
we need people to talk about it, make sure that it becomes like important enough to actually get and um, become a higher priority for the team. Go for it. Last question. So I'm just curious, what is the WordPress community team responsible for? What's their purview? Um, the WordPress community team is responsible supporting and distributing our global sponsorship money. We have a pool of money um, that we use to sponsor um, and to give sponsor, um, grants to um, work camps across the world when you become a work camp and also to our meetups. So we all pay for their meetup.com accounts um, when they join the official chapter account and also um, venues when they um, do a submission to the venue costs. Um, it's based on the Big Mac cost because we believe that we want our community organizers to concentrate on looking after the community rather than running it after sponsorship, which is one of the hardest things you have to do. So if we can take a little bit of that burden by giving them 20%, 60% of their budget, and also like any um, any excess of that money as well. So if you over if you under budget um, and then you've got a bit extra, it never comes out of an organizer's pocket. That's kind of the ethos around it. Um, we tell organizers to try and not mean that, that doesn't mean that they get to like burn through all the money and burn through all the, the, part, the part, but it does mean that they have some financial um, stability um, and support there. And also in the US, we have an insurance for all of the US and North America's uh, work camps so that they are all insured automatically. Um, in the UK, we have to buy them ourselves and in different places, so we have to do different things. Um, we also distribute swag, so which includes lanyards, stickers and badges, um, and they get sent to all of them. We basically say, we know you've got an event coming up, would you like some swag? They reply back with, an e with a, a snail mail address and a phone number because customs is a pain, and, and then send all that through. Um, and also we have a support channel, open offices, where organizers for both meet up and work camps come together and ask questions Sometimes we, like other uh, meetup organizers and other work camp organizers will chime in and say, hey, we did this for Singapore and we did this for Bulgaria and we did this for, you know, Oslo. Um, maybe this will work in your local area. And then sometimes, you know, the community says, oh, I heard about, you know, the Japanese community go out for sushi as one of their meetup things when, the, you know, people have these issues. So there's a centralized community of community mm. organizers and stuff like that. Um, and we also try and support any... Um, events that are happening where people come up with new ideas. So um, before I even joined the community team, I came up with the idea of a contributor day. That was a standalone event, um, not attached to a work camp, which is what the original thing was. Um, I said, ah, oh, the Manchester community can do this on our own. We don't need like all these fancy things. Um, and I was out of pocket by 200 pounds because of the venue. And then someone said, how much is this costing you? And I was like, oh, just the venue. Um, actually, I should probably get some food too. And they were like, oh, you should get some sponsorships. And my solution to get a sponsorship was to sell tickets. The tickets meant absolutely nothing. <laughs> you didn't need a ticket to go to the event. It was just, you can buy tickets in, a, in an orders of 10 pounds to basically pay off. And there was a maximum of 20 tickets. And I was like, if you want to give me my money back, this is how you give me my money back. And it was really, really cool. It was really simple. Um, but yeah, like, um, sometimes I just run off with things and people have to point this out to me. <laughs> um, so no things like that, the community team, we're just dis currently discussing how to expand our financial aid across more events like that because when I was doing that, there was no financial aid for like these special events that happened that people are trying to celebrate their community with. Oh, we also do um, workout mentoring as well and meetup mentoring as well. And we also look after any meetups and work camps that go into disarray. So, you know, when they um, go into dormant state, um, we try and find a new organizer and like find out why things are happening and support those as well. We've also had to deal with um, political riots and all this other stuff that people get the wrong end of the stick. So we help write various legal stuff, which is kind of boring, but yeah, lots and lots of support for our organizers because they are, the grassroots point of contact, and so it's really important that we support those people. Any other questions? Sorry, I do realize that was a really long answer. Cool, I think it's lunchtime or mentoring time. If you're going to be a mentor um, orientation for the next few days, I would love to talk to you all. I will be here till tomorrow morning, so um, please come and find me if you have any other questions. Thank you so much.